Hi guys, welcome to 16 Bit Bench. This is Matt. Uh, a lot of fun today we're going to have with this uh, original 1978 Midway Space Invaders. You can see there. Uh, the cabinet's in really good condition for its age. Um, so I'm with uh, Julian at Retro Rama and he, uh, he rents out all these kinds of things. So we've got lots of pinball arcade machines here and some of them do need a little bit of work. So this Space Invaders uh, is, has a power problem. It doesn't start up when it's powered on. And sometimes when it does start up, uh, the screen's all garbled and there's all nonsense. And then about one in six or one in seven times it will work normally. So what we're going to do is have a look inside, pull the board out, uh, probably need to replace some components, and then come back the next day and uh, power it on and see if we've got it fixed. So that's what we'll do. Right, so we're back in the workshop now, and uh, I've, got the, I've got the motherboard from, the Space, in, from Space Invaders here. Uh, and we're going to replace a few components on it. Um, so there are two boards to this system. We've got the motherboard, which is the lower lower one here, and then there's a, a driver board, which is the upper board. Uh, and they're they're connected by an edge connector, which you can see here. Um, so let's just pull this board out. So on the motherboard, you've got the RAM and uh, sorry, the ROMs and the RAM and the and the processor, and then some log discrete logic. Um, so a couple of uh, passive components that we're going to replace. So in a lot of places are these tantalum, um, sorry, um, these smoothing capacitors. Um, they're not tantalum ones, um, and they're just there to make sure the power goes around the board and doesn't have spikes in it and stuff. Uh, this little guy here has lost a leg, um, so we're going to be replacing that guy. Uh, it's this one. Uh, the others I'm going to leave as they are because they don't really, uh, they're not essential components to the functionality of the board. Uh, if the power supply is good enough, then a lot of these aren't, aren't really, don't really do anything at all. Um, there's two tantalum caps on, well, there were two tantalum caps on this board. There's this little blue guy here, looks like an M&M. &M, and then there was one here. This guy had lost a leg, so um, the other day I replaced it uh, with a electrolytic. Um, so back in the day, the reason they would have used tantalums on these boards would be to, uh, because they're very stable, uh, they don't vary in their values, um, and very reliable components. Uh, the electrolytics of the time, which you can see some of the these guys up here, uh, were not as reliable. Um, and as anyone knows who's uh, got a piece of vintage electronics, it's usually the capacitors and the electrolytic capacitors that need to be replaced first. But uh, modern electrolytics are a bit more reliable, and this is a good brand. Uh, I think it's a Philips uh, cap, so I know that it's perfectly suitable to replace that tantalum, uh, and it's just something, something I had in my box, so I used it. So yeah, what we're going to do on the motherboard is replace this guy that snapped off, uh, replace these electrolytics up here, and then the edge connector is uh, is solder on copper. So we're going to reflow the edge connector on both sides. Uh, there's the other side of the board. This guy here, we're going to reflow that. A couple of the pins on the uh, on the RAM bank are bent and are borderline short. Uh, so let's have a let's have a closer look to, on that. So yeah, up here um, you can see these pin, pins are bent. Um, they're close to touching, and that's just wear and tear. Really, the board's been removed from the machine. Probably someone pressed down on it when they were doing some work or something, and they just bent the pins on on this first chip. So. What I'm probably going to do is just go around and these legs are longer than they really need to be anyway. If you can see the length there. Uh, so we're going to snip those. Okay, so next thing I'm going to do is uh, replace the capacitors on the motherboard and then we're going to uh, talk about the driver board and some of the components we're going to replace on that one. So yeah, let's get on.
Okay, so I've finished the work on the motherboard, so let's just have a quick look at that before we move on to the next board. Uh, so we had this guy that I'd already replaced here. Um, this smoothing capacitor, which is replacing these orange ones. Um, I did think about removing all of the orange ones from the board, but it's an old board. I don't really want to do work that I don't need to do. Um, they're not like I said they're not essential to the functionality of the board and it's just more likely that the more of them you move the more likely you're going to uh, cause a short and not catch it or lift a trace or something like that so I don't really want to do that kind of work if I don't have to um, here I've replaced the old electrolytics with these these new ones uh, I'm not sure what what brand they are but uh, they're from uh, Radio Spares which is like a you know, like uh, Element 13 sort of thing in the UK. Um, and then uh, there's that guy there as well, it's done. If you look at the edge connector here, I've reflowed it. Uh, it had, if you see here, you can see the where it, the original solder is and it's all dull and it's not making a good connection. So I've just reflowed that, cleaned it up with a little bit of Isopro to take off the, uh, take off the flux from the solder. And I've done that on both sides. So there's the other side as well. And there were some big gouges. You can kind of see them there uh, where it hasn't flowed right. Uh, so I've kind of flowed back over those to make sure they are good. Uh, previously, I've also cleaned the edge connector with uh, some isopropanol. Um, I think this was a problem before the board was intermittent. It was only booting up every five or six goes. And I think that's that was down to the edge connector. Um, yeah, so that is um, that is the motherboard side done. So where the RAM bank is, the ROMs and the CPU. Uh, next, we'll look at the driver board and um, see what needs to be done with that one. Uh, all we're doing is just re sort of removing some of the components that, that are used, typical suspects like the electrolytic capacitors. See these axials here, here, they're all gonna go. Um, the rest of the board is probably fine. So on here, it looks like I've got all the audio drivers up here. I'm guessing this is the only potentiometer on the board, so that's probably volume. Uh, and this big um, heatsink here is over a um, transistor, which is probably just going to be the audio transistor. Um, yeah, so what I'm going to do is replace the axials. I've got uh, I've got new axials here, uh, so we're going to swap these out. And I'm going to do the same thing with the edge connector on this. So this is the edge connector that goes between the driver board and the motherboard. And up here you can see all the pin connectors, and they go to the joysticks. And uh, and I think the monitor or the monitor may come off the edge connector on the motherboard. I don't remember. But when we get back to Julian, we'll uh, we'll be able to see that if that's the case. Okay, yeah, so I'm just gonna continue on, replace the components here, reflow, reflow the edge connector, and then put the two boards back together, and that should be pretty much it for all the bench work for this stuff. So I just came up across something that I probably want to show you guys. Okay, so I'm, I was just lifting this axial uh, capacitor here. And what you can see is prob has happened is, if I got something small to point with, uh, here we go. Uh, I've pulled the uh, other side of the via for that off. 
Now, um, that's not a problem here, because as you can see, this is this is an isolated fire, so there's no there's no trace coming off this side of the board. Um, so that means that there's no electrical connectivity on this side of the board. It's all on the other side of the board, and on the other side of the board, the traces are fine. Uh, so I got lucky here. Yeah, it, it, it was just a little disc of metal um, that just it just came away. Basically, it's old, and uh, judging by the um, corrosion on the other side of the board, I think maybe this this capacitor's leaked a little bit. So yeah, just to, just to show you that, um, not a problem. But yeah, something to be aware of with older boards. <laughs> Okay, so that's the work uh, finished for the uh, driver board as well. Uh, so let's just take a look at what I've done. Uh, you can see I've replaced the old electrolytic axial caps with these new uh, Vichy ones. Um, so there were five on the board. One, two, three, four, and this little guy hiding under there five uh, managed to replace that one without without removing the heatsink which was which is a bonus uh, nothing else on the board is really uh, that much trouble as I said the board is ostensibly working um, what I've done is I've reflowed the edge connector here with uh, with some fresh solder just to brighten that up a little bit and hopefully that makes a better electrical connection uh, when it goes uh, back into the motherboard so yeah so now all that's left to do is reassemble the two pieces uh, and then go back to up to London and uh, put it in the cabinet and uh, and play it. So yeah, let's get on. Right, so this is the the pair of boards reassembled. Um, not a major job. Few few bits to, that were replaced. Um, could have done a full refurbishment, so that would have been replacing all of these guys, and uh, and probably some more of the passives on the driver board. Really though, I don't think that's necessary at this point. Uh, if we take it back up and it doesn't work, then yeah, I'm gonna have to bring it back, um, but we'll see. So next step is get in the car, drive back up to London, see Julian, put the board back in the machine, power it on. Um, I just don't have the equipment to test this board uh, in the lab. As you can see, it has a, it's not a jammer board obviously, because it's from 1978 and Jammer didn't come around till 1985. So this is a bespoke midway connector. Um, yeah, this is the, uh, for those playing along at home, as Dave Jones likes to say, uh, the motherboard is the uh, A008 revision. So I think it's that would probably be version eight of, of the motherboard. And the upper board uh, says on it, that is the D739. So um, I don't know what revision that is or if that's even any different. It has a date stamp of 1978. Uh, if we look at the components, uh, nine nine week seventy nine for some of this logic. Uh, let's see what we got on the top. I think it says nineteen ninety three. Actually, that would be interesting. I might be misreading that. Uh, no, this uh, this processor here is thirty uh, second week seventy nine. Mm, that looks like 31st week 79 so yeah the components seem to come from like from the end of the 70s which is in uh really to be expected for this board i mean it doesn't look to me like any any of the components have been replaced so um yeah that's it so yeah back up to um back up to london plug it in and play it let's go one or two players okay so 
Hi, uh, we're back now uh, with Julian at Retrorama and this is the Space Invaders. So we've put the board in the machine and as you can see, uh, it's working pretty well. Uh, this, is a, this is an original machine we have here. It's, um, we re uh, Julian replaced the panel there with, with, a, with a newer one because the old one was rusty, but other than that, it's uh, all original parts. You can just see in there. So I think the only thing really that that could be replaced is the upper gel on, on the uh, on the screen there. Everything else seems to look good. Okay, so let's go around the back and have a look at the board. Yeah! Okay, so this is around the back of the machine, and here you can see where I've put the, I've put the replacement the uh, the board that I fixed in there. And there's the uh, harness, and I think these are the controls uh, there. And then if we go in, you can see the tube is facing upwards there and there's the uh, the tube driver board as well. So as far as we know these are all original 1978 uh, components for this machine. Okay and we're back at the front again so the panel that Julian put in this is a new old stock panel this isn't a repro this is an original 70s panel uh, that, that Julian found online and uh, yeah, so that is the Space Invaders repair. Let's just look Let's at the see. side there. Oh, that yeah, that's the old panel. You can see a lot of game wear on this. A lot of fun has been had on this panel here. Uh, there we go. So um, if you like the video, please like the video on YouTube. Please consider um, subscribing. I'm on Facebook as 16-Bit Bench, so if you could follow me there. We do all these kinds of repairs and this sort of stuff. Uh, this machine will be going up for sale, but uh, it may be by the time you see the video that it's long gone. Okay, so thanks a lot and I'll see you next time.